All right, next on the agenda is the uh, presentation by Dunkel Middle School students on how Farmington Hills can lessen its impact on the environment. Uh, who would like to speak first? All right, I'm Colleen Stam. And this is Nanette Simmons. We're both eighth grade teachers at Dunkel, science teachers. I just want to give you a quick introduction. First, I want to thank you for the opportunity for these students to present their findings and share it with you. I also want to thank Alan Archer, our principal, and George Heiser, our superintendent, for coming to support us, and then all the parents of these students that have come to support. Um, just a little bit of a background. We are always trying to inspire our kids to learn outside the classroom. So we thought, why not give them this challenge? So we've been learning about how humans can impact the environment. So we challenged them to figure out how can we lessen our impact in the, on the environment here in Farmington Hills. So they've all come up with these solutions on their own. They were voted on by their peers to come represent. So here's the best of Dunkel for you. First up is the Festival of Trees. Oh. Podium in my way. Our presentation is festivals and bands. Some results of bad fertilizers includes it contaminates water from fertilizer runoff and it increases the process of eutrophication, which is excess algae growth and results in decreased oxidation levels in the water. It can implant too many nitrates in the water and cause fish to die. And overusing any fertilizers can cause improper irrigation and low, low soil quality and improper irrigation will transport the bad unused fertilizers into water sources, making cleansing water very difficult. Some bad ingredients in fertilizers are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Using too much of fertilizers with these ingredients, or using them at all, involves draining huge amounts of water from the ecosystems, removal of vegetation, and the release of greenhouse gases. So the first part of our solution to solve the fertilizer problem would be to have a ban on high pollutant fertilizers. And by passing a ban on high pollutant fertilizers in Farrington Hills, we will prevent much of the danger that comes with these products, such as fertilizer runoff. Also, it will encourage the use of eco-friendly and organic fertilizers in the community, such as SCD BioAge, Neptune's Harvest, Basalt Rock Dust, Dr. Earth, and Wholesome Sweeteners. And some facts about deforestation are that it can damage the quality of our land. Chunks of the land the size of Panama are lost each year from deforestation. Millions of species lose their homes. 70% of the world's land, plants, and animals live in forests, and they are all pretending, depending on our protection. The canopies of many rainforests block the rays of the sun during the day, and they hold the heat in at night. But deforestation destroys these canopies and changes the climate. Climate change from deforestation can harm the health of plants and animals. Almost 50% of the world's forests have already been cleared, and re renewable resources such as trees are destroyed every day. But how does it affect our community? In Michigan, we have many lakes and rivers, and we also have trees, yet it's still not enough. When the number of trees along a river bank is low, the soil erodes and falls into the water, polluting it with excess dirt. This causes clogging and murky water with less sunlight for the underwater world. Another problem with not having enough trees is that as our population increases, we, re we require more land to live on. So the trees get cut down and the oxygen level is depleted. Four years ago, many older schools were knocked down in our community. One of them was Wooddale Elementary School, which is surrounded by a large ring of old but beautiful trees. Unfortunately, new houses are going to replace our love school. This involves trees being cut down and so the beauty and health of the area will vanish. But what's our solution going to be? The second part of our solution is to have a festival of the trees. Our idea is to have a festival that takes place at Heritage Park. We would like to have a naturalist giving multiple nature walks around Heritage Park explaining the benefits of trees. We would like to also have a walk for the trees in which people will walk from downtown Farmington to the site of the festival. This will raise awareness as well. We would also like to have environmental games for kids such as painting, flower pots, and others. We would also like to have a nature photography and art contest including three winners each receiving a sapling and organic products. Everyone will have the opportunity to plant tr a tree and will go home with a few seeds. We would also appreciate a presentation by nonprofit organizations, also possibly including Greening of Detroit, Peace, and Peace, Love, and Planet. 
But how is it good? This festival will raise awareness for the problems of deforestation in a, in a fun and engaging way for all ages. It will also help strongly bond our community with the environment around us. So the first quote that kind of sums it up a little, the problems, is what will children say when they find out we knew and we did nothing? Another quote we found was, no matter where you live, forests make your life possible. When a forest is lost anywhere, people feel it everywhere. And then we sort of have a timeline of our progress. We can't really say it all because it's long, but we would like to have our band pass by November, and we would like to have the festival somewhere between April and June of 2016. On this side, we have our current future. If we continue with these destructive habitats, which results in a polluted water so source, factories, and empty forests. On the other side, if you help us make the change, Farmington Hills could look like this, with clean, rushing um, rivers and beautiful, lush trees. So now it's time for you to come in. We would love to have you help us make our solutions into reality. We have our contact information on the front, which has our email, and our website. And now it's in your hands to help this come to reality. I didn't get a flyer. Um, the Roof River Rescue is a little early this year. It's on, I think it's on, is it the 30th of June? I mean, May? Yes. Uh, Rouge River Rescue, uh, we always have, every, every year I've been involved in it since 1996, where we try to remove things from the river, uh, get rid of uh, invasive species in Heritage Park, and, uh, and so we do that uh, every year. It'll be on a Saturday morning, which is, I think, which is the 30th of May, so you're all invited to come and help out on that, which uh, helps the river and helps uh, get rid of invasive species. Um, as far as the fertilizer is concerned, a lot of our local merchants have banned any, uh, any fertilizers with, with phosphorus in it. If you check out the stores, you'll notice that there's no phosphorus in any of the fertilizers anymore. They might have high nitrogen. The middle number is the phosphorus number, but it's a zero there. That means they've taken it out. So we, you don't find a lot of that and because there were some requests earlier, maybe four or five years ago, to, to put a ban on phosphorus because that really does pollute our, our waterways. Um, we've been very good in our area. The, our, river, our Rouge Rivers are coming back, are part of the basin, and it's because of concerned people like you that have been doing something about it. Uh, as far as planting trees, we just planted a tulip tree on Arbor Day you know, over at Caustic Center. We've planted trees in Heritage Park. Uh, I think I've planted two or three of them myself, and uh, we annually do that on, as a part of our Arbor Day celebration. So. The, uh, the city is very attuned to a lot of things. We are a tree city. We have champion trees in Farmington Hills, but it's not, a lot of, not a lot of communities have champion trees, and we were very lucky to be, be a, tr a champion tree city, and we are a tree city also, so we, we do a lot about that. But uh, thank you very, very much for the, uh, for the presentation. I understand we have a few more. Mayor? Yes. I was going to add in, um, a couple years ago, we actually t uh, looked at putting a ban on um, uh, exactly what you're talking about, and didn't we form um, some sort of organization, I think a homeowner's organization about living along the creeks? Yes, we have, we, we have the Riparian Rights Group. Uh, I think Spence, Spence Brown's probably in charge of that, because that's, that's his thing. But people that live along our waterways have, have been disseminating information to people that are along the waterways in Farmington Hills to make sure that they they maintain a distance from the water when they're putting down fertilizers and weed killers so that they don't run off into the, into the uh, rivers. So uh, it's our riparian rights group that does that and, and gives out that information. And so I, is there any way to get a hold of those folks? We can contact our office and we can get you information on the riparian owners and the kinds of things that you can do, your own backyard, side yard, be that as it may. But we, we think about everyone as being tributary. Actions taken even away from that have an impact as they've described, so. Right, but we have been trying to do things over the years to you know, prevent the pollutions of our waterways. And uh, we, a lot of the things that you're asking us to do, there's more that we can do, of course, but we've been actually doing some of this stuff over the years and uh, you're welcome to join in with our riparian owners and find out more. 
Okay, next. Um, and first, I do want to say thank you for being so actively involved and um, hearing our green ideas. So next, we have Erin Sawyer, and she'll be talking about um, electric car stations. Oh, where's Nate when you need him? So, yeah. Hello, my name is Erin Sawyer, and um, the name of my presentation is Go Electric and You Have to Go Home. So, cars are everywhere. Most of us ride in them every day. They have revolutionized transportation, but with improvements, there must be trade offs. Whether sporty or practical, all of our traditional gasoline consuming cars produce emissions. When these emissions enter the atmosphere in large amounts, they create the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is when gases like CO2 trap heat inside the atmosphere, gradually warming it up, resulting in global warming. Burning a gallon of gasoline produces about 19.64 pounds of CO2. On average, the U.S. uses 374.74 million gallons of gasoline just per day. That's 7,359,893,600 pounds of CO2 the U.S. is pumping into the atmosphere per day. That's a lot of pollution. <laughs> One way we can reduce this amount is to use methods of transportation that, produ that produce little to no pollution. One of these methods is electric cars. The problem. Farmington Hills only has one electric car charging station, compared to um, nearby cities who have several. Plus, the only charger we have is at a Nissan Suburban dealer, so that's kind of given. But um, this makes it inconvenient for electric car owners in our city because the only place they can charge their cars is at home. This discourages residents from owning electric cars, even though these cars are better for our environment. Some facts about electric cars. Electric cars run on battery versus gas. They run cleanly and quietly. The battery in them needs to be charged versus filling them up with gas. So I was able to uh, talk to uh, someone who owns an uh, electric car. And some of the things that I got out of that interview was that um, Ann Arbor uh, has a ton of charging stations. Uh, owning an electric car saves you a lot of money. Um, he said that his first year of ownership, he calculated about an $8,000 savings in fuel costs, and that electric cars are very convenient. You can plug your car in at night. You don't have to worry about stopping at gas stations. Um, because he gets a practical range of about 265 miles per charge, and you get premium park in, parking often. Impact on air, electric versus traditional. Electric cars produce little to zero pollution while they are running, unlike traditional cars. When we burn gasoline, it pumps uh, lots of CO2 into our atmosphere, causing the greenhouse effect. Producing gasoline and oil causes a lot of air pollution. Doesn't producing electricity cause pollution? Yeah. Um, a lot of our electricity today is produced by burning fio fossil fuels. However, electricity can be generated in other ways that are much better for our environment and are renewable, such as solar or wind power. Um, in fact, the uh, LARA Public Service Commission um, says that the Michigan Public Act 295 requires Michigan electric providers to achieve a retail supply portfolio that includes at least 10% renewable energy by 2015. Um, in addition, producing the electric electricity needed to power an electric car often, uh, depending on your location, produces less harmful emissions than the process of obtaining and burning the gas to power a gas car. So this diagram shows um, how much, how uh, many miles per gallon your gas car would have to get to equal the amount of emissions that you would get in an electric vehicle in different areas. And so as you can see that Michigan, it's 38 miles per gallon, but um, and other places it can be upwards of 110. It just depends on where you are and like where, how much, or how your energy is produced where you live. So the impact on land, electric, oh, sorry, electric versus traditional. Leaks in cars, pumps, and the tanks under gas stations can cause gas and oil to soak into the ground. Oil from oil changes must be recycled or disposed of. And the impact on water, oops. Um, is that when mining, mining for oil, oil spills, like the BP oil spill, can happen, which can devastate thriving aquatic, aquatic ecosystems. So my action plan is that Farmington Hills should put in several groups of chargers 
with electric only parking in high traffic areas. So this is an electric car charger. The plug on the side plugs into the car. Um, they can be public or only usable with card access. Uh, it can take anywhere from a half hour to overnight uh, to charge an electric car, depending on how long you want to charge it, your car, and uh, the charging station. This is why many people park their cars and leave them to charge while they shop or eat. So the economic benefits of having charging stations in our city is that electric cars take time to charge. This encourages people to shop or grab a bite to eat while they charge, which brings extra business to the businesses around the charging station. Um, having an electric car station makes Farmington Hills a prime stop on road trips, on the way home from work, and others. This brings more visitors to the city. And also, having an electric car charging station will encourage people to stay at hotels in Farmington Hills. You wouldn't want to stay at a hotel that wasn't near a gas station, would you? Especially if you were traveling in a car. The trade-offs are that it will take money. Charging stations will be free to use, so the city will have to pay for electricity and installation. However, the parking will be electric only, so if non-electric cars try to park there, they could get a ticket, which would offset costs. Also, <laughs> retailers nearby might want to help pay for the chargers, given that it might increase their business. It will also take space, because we will need to designate uh, special parking spots for the chargers. And it will also take time. I estimate about a year to 18 months to finish the project. So. Um, if concerning Detroit's auto industry, both Ford and GM make electric cars along with many other companies. Tesla also makes all American electric cars. So the timeline, it starts um, May, June of this year when I meet with the city council, which is right now. And then hopefully in about a month, the council will approve funding. <laughs> and then next, the council will get bids for how much um, the project will be. And then hopefully, I was hoping that in September 2015, the project would start and the first group of charges will be installed. I was kind of thinking that they could be um, installed at the shopping center near 14 Mile and Orchard Lake. And then after that, we could monitor usage and install more. And then the project would be finished around September 2016. So yeah, that's all. Thank you for your consideration. at putting in a charging station here at City Hall. Um, I don't know if that fell apart or oh, I know Nate here. was looking into that. Nate Geinser was supposed to be looking. Yeah, well, a more likely location would be a golf course or someplace where people are going to be a little bit longer. Right. We have a couple of employees that have electric cars and we allow them to plug in, albeit it's 110 and a, a trickle charge, not the faster charges that these uh, pieces of equipment provide, but we have provisions for that. Most of the people that stop at City Hall are here very quickly get a building permit, something like that, and they're gone, so not a lot of opportunity to charge, but the golf course might be a possibility. Maybe the activity center, people tend to be there for longer periods of time, so we are actively looking at that. And I think one of our, uh, one of our, the businesses located here in town actually makes charging stations, that's Bosch. I think that they are one of the providers of, this, of the, the, the equipment. So we have been looking into that. Thank you for bringing it to the public's attention, but uh, yeah, we are looking at it, and of course the question is where, where to put them um, and uh, the cost of actually getting the equipment and installing the equipment. Because no matter where we put it, it has to be near a place that has electricity so that we, we, can, we can plug into the charging stations. But uh, these things are being looked at now. I don't know if they're on the budget through, the, through 2016, but I do know that, that there is an interest in it, and we have a member of our staff that's been looking at that. Sure. Yes. Yes, yeah, sure. I believe we did, when we put together clear zoning also, um, we put in standards for private parking lots and the number of spaces and the number of electrical charging stations they would have to have for new construction. doesn't apply to the people who are already here, but um, as the city grows, that will change. And uh, another thing you might be interested in, a few years ago, we had a car donated to the city for a period of one year. It was a Mercedes, and it was a hydrogen car. And there was a hydrogen uh, uh, conversion uh, place over at Inkster, and it was actually in Southfield, Inkster and 11 Mile, where you could fill the car. But it only went about 80 miles on a fill-up. But, uh, and it was pretty quiet too, wasn't it? Zero emissions. Zero That's emissions. Great. It gave out water vapor. But uh, once, once, the car went, once the car went back to Mercedes, the, the station went away too. But uh, we have looked at other forms of, uh, of, of vehicles that uh, to lower admissions. Samantha? 
I just want to add, I am so impressed by this presentation. I used to travel with the auto industry. Um, in about 2008 was when I started, and I worked on our electric vehicles as well as our hybrid electric. So it's amazing for me to personally see where our electric vehicles um, have come to today. There's a lot of companies out there that will actually subsidize your uh, charging stations in your own home. So that's an easy way to get the message out of to help you know get a little bit more um, insight and hopefully get um, more people to commit to an electric vehicle. I believe it only costs an extra dollar 25 a day in your electric bill if I remember so it's a definitely a cost saving um, for those owners and of course I like I said I'm just extremely impressed by all of you here today next all right next up are Lizzie and Jordan and they're gonna have a little bit of a different take on fertilizer for you So, we all live by the Rouge River. The Rouge River is the Farmington Hills watershed. Everyone's drinking water and clean water comes from the river. It's in our backyards and by our schools, but it's the most polluted river in Michigan. One of our classmates used to live by the river, and she said that in the summer she could smell the river from her house. There are lots of ways the Rouge River can be polluted, from trash lying on the ground being flown into the river by wind, or sediment from digging near the river and being washed into the river. These are preventable causes, but we are focused on the idea of fertilizer polluting the river. Most people, when they garden at their house, think the more fertilizer, the better. However, plants only absorb the fertilizer that they really need, just like humans only eat the food they need until they are full. All the excess fertilizer that is not used by the plants is washed into storm drains when it rains, and the storm drains are connected directly to the Rouge River, carrying the fertilizer with it. This area that we live in can cause a huge amount in all the areas that the Rouge flows through. On May, 5th, on May 5th, River Rouge, um, Michigan residents were advised not to drink tap water without boiling it first, reports Local 4 News. Because of water contamination, people can't drink the water that they need. In our science class at school, we tested creek water from the Rouge River, school water, home water from Farmington Hills, and bottled water for different substances. What we found was that creek water contained nitrogen nitrate, which is the main ingredient in plant and lawn fertilizer. This is a dangerous chemical that can harm the environment and destroy the ozone layer in the air. Nitrogen nitrate may help your garden, garden plants grow fast, but it also helps algae grow excessively in the river. The fertilizer causes algae blooms, which is a large amount of algae growing in waterways. When the algae dies, it decomposes and it sucks up the oxygen in the water, causing an area without any oxygen. That makes a fish die in that area because of the lack of oxygen. In a Berkeley College article, it states, after carbon dioxide and methane, nitrous oxide is the most potent greenhouse gas, trapping heat and contributing to global warming. It also destroys the stratospheric ozone, which protects the, plan which protects the planet from harmful ultraviolet rays. That means that nitrogen is the second highest contributor to global warming after carbon dioxide. It's a big contributor in what happens in the atmosphere. The nitrogen causes a chemical reaction with the UV light from the sun and with other gases in the air destroying the ozone. The ozone layer of our atmosphere protects us from dangerous ultraviolet rays that can cause skin cancer, but the nitrogen is destroying that layer of our atmosphere. When gardeners rinse off their driveways and sidewalks, the excess fertilizer that they have haphazardly placed on their plants washes down the road and into the nearest storm drain. Unaware of the harm being caused, people do not measure out their fertilizer and may be reluctant to change their ways if they read the instructions. We looked on the Home Depot website where you can compare different types of items. I compared Bigger Lawn Fertilizer, which is non-organic, and Miller Organite Organic Fertilizer. 
Both of these items cost $12.78, and the organic fertilizer is 36 pounds, whereas the non-organic fertilizer is 14.26 pounds. It also shows that the organic fertilizer lasts two weeks longer than the non-organic fertilizer, so it's a better deal all in all. Even though it may be inconvenient for people to measure out their fertilizer instead of just throwing it out on their plants and lawns, it will help create a large positive impact on the environment. There are, there are already guidelines about the phosphorus content in fertilizer in the city of Farmington. If there are already guidelines for that, there should also be guidelines about nitrogen and, pho and phosphorus in Farmington Hills. The most important thing to remember when using fertilizer is not to use too much. All of the fertilizer that isn't used by plants ends up in the Rouge River. We don't want to damage the Rouge River because even though it's a renewable resource, the fertilizer and other pollution stays in the river or gets into the atmosphere. We brainstormed ideas and decided upon something that could be created to inform customers about fertilizer that they are buying in a way that they would be able to understand. So as you may have seen, we decided to create an eye-catching bright yellow sticker or flyer that the city provides for stores that sell fertilizer that would be placed on shelves and in the fertilizer section and on price tags in stores. The sticker informs the buyer about how to safely use a fertilizer or even to change their mind and buy an organic fertilizer instead. We cannot guarantee that this will help lower the amount of fertilizer in the Rouge because customers generally don't want to spend more than they already do, and some organic fertilizers are priced higher than non-organic fertilizers. However, as long as we inform the customer of a solution to the problem, we can only hope that they consider it and help make our environment safer and less polluted. We also think it would be a good idea for Farmington Hills to adopt a law limiting the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus that companies can use in fertilizer to sell it in Farmington Hills. Everyone in Farmington Hills uses the Rouge River in some type of way. Our main goal is to try and keep it beautiful and sanitary one step at a time. We hope you consider what we have informed you about and think about the small changes that we can make to help clean up our river. Thank, Thank you. you. And you got one more? Up next are Danielle and Jordan. They are feeling a little under the weather today, so I'm giving them a lot of credit for coming right now. <laughs> First off, we'd like to thank the Council for allowing us to present. This presentation addresses some of our human impacts on the environment and how we can lessen them. We will discuss air, land, and water pollution and our solutions to them. This is our solutions to our pollution by Jordan Hicks and Danielle Goldberg. Oh, air pollution, idling. Idling is to have machinery operate at a low speed disengaged from the load. This basically means when your engine is running while your car is in park. So how idling harms. Idling causes a lot of diseases, um, including chronic bronchitis, asthma, heart disease, and cancer. In San Francisco, the EPA found that air toxins can from idling were responsible for 2,600 for every 1 million deaths in the city. Land pollution. Plastic bags pollute land dramatically and only increasingly. Water pollution. It also affects crucial marine ecosystems. It takes about 200 to 1,000 years for a plastic bag to decay. Plastic bag or plastic was invented in 1907, so we have never seen a plastic bag fully decay. 100 animal species are harmed by plastic debris. The Pacific Trash Vortex is a vortex of marine trash located in the Pacific Ocean. It is twice the size of Texas, and it is, slowing nearing, it is slowly nearing the coast of Hawaii. So when plastic is swallowed by animals, these animals can't digest real food and die a slow, painful death from starvation or infection. 
Our solution is to have idling reduced in Farmington Hills. We think there should be an idling fine of $40 for excess idling. It should be, idling should be banned in public p places for the, with the exception of loading zones and emergency vehicles. Okay, so these are a few um, tables that explain a few benefits to eliminating idling. The top two show how many gallons of gasoline would not be burned if you eliminated five minutes of idling. Um, the second table shows the financial savings of eliminating five minutes of idling in your day. Um, for a small engine, you would have a direct, or sorry, if this is annually, uh, a direct fuel savings of $30, an indirect fuel efficiency of $42, Per car, that would be a savings of $63, and per family, which is two parents and a child, that is $113 per year. And for an eight-cylinder engine, you would have a direct fuel savings of $60, an indirect fuel efficiency of $83, and per car, that would be a savings of $134 per year, and per family, that would be $241, and both with the wear and tear cost of $9. <coughs> um, my friend and I in seventh grade, we, b we, have, we both attended Forest Elementary School, and my friend Rachel Whittlesey and I, uh, for a Girl Scout group project, we wanted to ban idling in uh, Forest's parking lot because when we attended Forest, there was a huge idling problem at the end of the day during dismissal. And once we um, <coughs> had the idling, uh, no idling signs put up in the parking lot, uh, many students seemed happier, and the principal was much happier with the results, and there was less complaints at the end of the day. <coughs> to our plastic ba bag solution, we would like to ban <coughs> plastic bags in Farmington Hills. There are many alternatives you could use, including cloth bags, biodegradable bags, and paper bags. While we do understand there are many drawbacks from these from these solutions because this will take much time and effort from all the citizens. There are so many benefits and will impact our environment in a positive way. Thank you so much for meeting with us and thank you for your consideration. I, uh, I have to ask Mr. Brock on this one, but we did, we have actually adopted an, an anti-idling policy in Farmington Hills. We did it about a year or two ago for our, our city vehicles, that they not idle more than five minutes because of the cost of fuel. And there are some vehicles, diesel vehicles, that have to idle for a little while anyway, but they don't need to do it as long as they were, and we've reduced our idling down to five minutes or less which uh, was a great savings to our city on, on the use of diesel fuel. But it's a very good idea for other people to, to adopt that because they do save money on gas and it does save our atmosphere and it's a very good idea. And thank you very much for bringing it to our attention. And uh, is that, that was the last one? Well, let's give them all a big round of applause. But uh, you can probably get more information from our city. Um, if anybody in the groups want to contact uh, Nate Geinzer in the, uh, in the city manager's office, he's, he's the green guy in town. And uh, he's the head of the, of, of this, I got a t-shirt today. Uh, we all got t-shirts today, but there, there is the uh, Georgetown University Energy Program, and we are a part of it. We were one of 50 cities throughout the United States that were, were allowed to compete. And if we win this, and we're working with the city of Farmington and with the Farmington Public Schools. And if we win the competition, which is based on saving energy, we could, uh, we could get a $5 million prize for our, for our city, for our schools, and for the city of Farmington. And so we are, are very acutely aware of, of, of uh, saving energy. The, the city hall alone, if, you've not, if you don't realize this, this city hall has no natural gas in it. It runs off of uh, geothermal heat. We save over $30,000 a year by not using gas in this building, but it's very comfortable. It cools us in the summer, it heats in the, in the winter, 
because of the, these wells that are, are around the uh, city hall. And we have photovolatile cells. We have 90 of them off on one side of the building. We have a green roof on this portion of the building where we have plant living material growing on our building that acts as uh, insulator and also takes pollutants out of the rainwater before it, uh, any, if we try to hold it here on site, but if not, it goes into rain gardens. And if, it, if we get enough rain, it will go into the storm system, but it's usually cleaned up water as opposed to just dirty water. So Farmington Hills has adopted a lot of, uh, a lot of green policies and we are, this is the greenest city hall in the state of Michigan. And I've been told by the Department of Energy, we might be one of the greenest city halls in the whole United States. And we are, we are an example to other cities and they, and they do tell other people about us. So environment is very, very important to Farmington Hills. And you're lucky to be in a community that does think that way. We actually have a screen out there. I don't know if it's, it's there's a touch screen out there that tells you all about this particular building and how to save energy on many different levels for the folks that are talking about saving the rivers not so much dealing with the building but uh, but that's the type of information that we need to uh, help our residents realize that keep fertilizers away from our our waterways and someone has you got dr massey yes i just want to make one quick comment and that's because it's great to see dunkel here um, being a graduate of Dunkel, as I went on to North Farmington, and eventually, yes, I did graduate from North Farmington too, so go Raiders. But when I was at Dunkel in the eighth grade, we had a science fair competition in my science fair project, which actually won some awards and um, kind of got me involved in science, which I continued to do, it was actually on photovoltaic cells. Only we didn't call them that then. Back then they were solar cells. So I had this entire project on solar cells, and I'm feeling like I was way ahead of my time. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because, hey, you know, keep it up. Good, good stuff, and Dunkel's doing good work. Why don't we also mention I would like to talk about it. I want to say um, so also that um, you guys did an excellent job. You described the problem, you proposed solutions, and your solutions were realistic solutions that we all should pursue. So I want to thank you for your presentation. You did an excellent job. A lot of research was done in your, in your work. I, it's quite evident of that. And again, I want to just thank you for your opportunity to hear your presentation tonight. Thank you. And before you go, if you could leave me one of the brochures, because I didn't get one. I wasn't sitting up there when you were handing them out. <laughs> no, they were still. Pass that down hmm? to Barry. We got oh, there. Oh, I got one now. Never mind. <laughs> thank you. All right. So